Hey everyone, it's Anna J. Wolner with the Bookish Net, part of the Author Library Network, sponsored by Creative Edge Publicity. And with me today, I am delighted to have Sasser Hill. Sasser, would you like to introduce yourself? Uh, sure. Um, I'm author Sasser Hill. Um, I have about eight books published to date. Um, the main uh, bunch of my books are the Nikki Latrell series. It's about a female jockey. And there are five of those. And the fifth book just came out in July. So, and that's called Shooting Star. Um, and it's a fun story because it takes place at Santa Anita Racetrack. And um, I don't know, did you um, ever watch the HBO series that was called Luck? That was about horse racing. Um, it had Nick Nolte and um, Hoffman were both in it, but it was an ill-fated series. It, uh, they canceled it mid-series because um, horses were dying on the track. I read about it. I, I think I saw an article in it or a, uh, um, one of those, uh, 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 like a uh, uh, internet post on msn.com or yahoo.com or whatever, you know, homepage. Uh, yeah. And and I think I read about that, but no, I never saw it. Is it still available to watch or have they, have they taken down all the previous episodes? I honestly, I can't answer that question, but gotcha. what I do know that was really interesting was um, I wanted to write um, a story about another movie. You know, I did the what if. What if another movie was filmed at Santa Anita Racetrack and my heroine, Nikki Latrell, was subcontracted by, and this is a real U.S. organization, it's called the Thoroughbred Racing Protection Bureau. It's the... Oh. Um, TRPB, and she will be hired, or she has been hired, to protect um, the racehorses because the TRPB's mission is to protect the integrity of horse racing, which is not always that easy to do. I mean, you know, there's a lot of a lot of crime because there's some. Anytime you have big money, money, you have big crime. So um, they don't want another fiasco to happen. And I was so lucky. I have contacts in Maryland racing. And um, the gal that I knew in Maryland put me in touch with the point man who dealt with HBO when they filmed the series Luck. So I went out to California and I met with him. He gave me a beautiful lunch and they toured me around. And he said that what they did was they didn't know what they were doing. They didn't know anything about horses and they would film a race scene. And then the director, it wasn't quite right for the director. So they would film it again. Uh, and they were just running the horses into the ground and they started dying. So Nikki's there to make sure nothing like that happens again. Um, but of course, in the first chapter, um, a sniper takes out one of the crew. So, I mean, and then there we go, <laughs> the, the murder mystery. And um, it's a kind of a thriller too. So it, it was fun. Um, it was really fun to be able to go out there and, and see everything and I had been there before I had been to the races a couple of years earlier than that so I knew I kind of understood Santa Anita and, and what it's like and and uh, and all the pageantry and the horse races and all the you know all the thing that every track has the same ingredients um, different amounts of different tracks so we have the uh, Sam Houston Raceway here, racetrack here um, uh, in Houston. And I've been a couple of times, although not recently, but uh, I've been a couple of times. But um, I grew up, as we were talking earlier, I grew up in East Texas on a cattle ranch. And I did barrel racing for a number of years. And we had cutting horses who uh, that it's very different type of you know uh we were talking earlier there are a lot of different styles and types of um writing or uh what what you can do uh like english style writing which is what you grew up uh writing and then for me it was western and uh rodeo and <laughs> Which the rodeo life is 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 interesting, and then you have thoroughbred racing, which is an entirely different 
ball game. And then so, the show world with the dressage. Yes. I mean, that's a whole nother. I don't know anything about dressage. I mean, I know so much about horses, but only, but the thoroughbred race horses. I don't, uh, I don't go in for dressage. I like barrel racing because there's a lot of action. The dressage yes. horses to me are always like contained. And danger. Well, they're contained so. They're not yes. allowed to, you know, I just like to get on a horse and go. I know, me too, me too. That's the best part of it. And and yes, with dressage, <laughs> it's more it's more pageantry and uh, and 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 gait and uh, the 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 way that the horse is able to. And there, there's a lot of there's a lot of big money in that as well because of the you know prestigious. It, it, think of it like the AKC awards or something like that mm -hmm. for for dogs. And it exactly. really showcases the breeding history of the horse and their lineage as well. And a lot of big money is paid for, uh, actually, I'll just go ahead and say for um, breeding rights, shall we say, <laughs> or access to um, that genetic material uh, for, for further generations, depending on, and in the racing world as well, is that right? Well, in the racing world, the way the thoroughbred uh, registry works is you have to have a live breeding. There's none of this artificial insemination. Oh. Um, yeah, you have to have a live breeding. Okay. So that makes it a little harder because you've got a whole year. Yeah. She has to be just in season. Right. Has to be just the right moment. And then, you know, you take her to, if you have the money, you send her up there a month before and just let her stay there and let the vets there keep her, you know, watch and watch and then breed her at the right moment. But if you're trying to save money, you have your vet come to your farm and look at her and say, well, I'd get her up there tomorrow if I were you. And you're like, okay. And you try to book, book the horse in and, and you stick them on a the trailer and off you go. And sometimes you had this year's foal at the side of the mare while you sent her off to with the bowl to get bred again. So it was a pretty scary business sometimes. You know, you're driving up around the country with this trailer full of um, everything you have. <laughs> it's, every bit of money you've got is in that trailer. <laughs> so you just, it, I, I, have to, I have to ask woman to woman. So you can, uh, you can back up to a gooseneck trailer. Yes. find it so amusing whenever I tell them that that's how I learned how to uh, ha up. How, how to use my mirrors whenever I back up because whenever you back up to to a horse trailer or a cattle trailer uh, or whenever you're backing them up and and you're 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 attached oh, you yeah. have no frame of reference at all with this giant trailer behind you so I tell people you know did you know that there's a difference between backing up you know, by turning over your shoulder and looking and backing up with mirrors. And uh, people are so surprised to, to find that out that, um, that, yeah, you have to use your mirrors whenever you have this gigantic gooseneck trailer behind you that's carrying live animals. Yeah. And some of them are very expensive live animals. And you, <laughs> you very true. So careful. I did get to a point where, um, when I got older, I thought, I'm not doing this anymore because I had a, um, a couple of incidents on the highway that were not pleasant. And I had this great big yearling and I had him in the trailer with um, an old mare to keep him um, company. And I was taking him up to a farm where they would prep him for the yearling show. And um, I don't know what happened. I'm going down the highway and all of a sudden the whole trail is going wonk, wonk, wonk. And I'm getting shoved around the road. And thank God there was a huge flat medium strip. It's just, and I just slowed down and pulled off. And uh, I, I remember some guy went by and he went, Jesus Christ, you know, because I, I had been going back and forth in front of him on the road, but somehow or other they had just torn the whole trailer inside. You know, they torn it all up, but we kind of patched it together and got the horse up there. So those kinds of things are scary. And because I've experienced those kinds of things, and I know the fear that you can have when things go wrong, um, it makes it easier for me to write. I know in one of my books, I have a scene where a horse erupts in the starting gate um, or won't go into the gate and rears up and falls against the gate. 
and crushes the jockey. And that's how my heroine gets the ride. And it's a terrible way to get a ride, but she gets the ride. Um, so, you know, it's all those experiences. You just wrap them right into your stories. It's wonderful. That was my next question. How how has this this past uh, you know experience worked its way into? Did you did you? I mean, every book that you have is equine based or has an element of it in yes. there. So it what came first, the horses or the books, the chicken or the egg? Horse of the carriage, um, <laughs> right? The horse of the carriage. That's a better one. <laughs> I um, I always knew I could write. I would. I was good. That was my bailiwick. The one thing I could do that I'd always get like an A is if I went did some sort of creative writing. But I think we talked about this before. I never believed that I could be an author. You know, that right. was beyond anything I would be capable of. Um, but I finally wrote something. Um, I remember we were in the fifth grade, you know, just little kids, and the teacher asked us to write something. So I was completely addicted to all of Walter <laughs> Barley's Dick Francis books. Um, excuse me, Walter Barley's Black Stallion books. And gotcha. uh, I wrote a little um, scene about a, a boy in a trailer with a racehorse and an old man was driving and something was wrong. I don't recall what it was, doesn't, but the teacher liked it so much, she made me read it out loud. You know, oh, no, I don't want to read it out loud, but anyway, I did. And um, a couple of little hands went up and I thought, what? And they said, what happens next? And that's when I knew I had something because, you know, if, if you are reading my book and you don't care what happens next, you're going to close it. It's done. Forget it. So... Then I had an idea that maybe I had something, maybe I had something. So, um, but you know, my first book wasn't published until uh, 10 years ago because I spent all that time being um, a marketing manager and a, uh, yeah, a meeting planner. I used to plan meetings in DC and hold luncheons on Capitol Hill and all this stuff. That wasn't me, you know, that wasn't me, but that's what I did. and. Um, so finally, I, I got, you know, in the right saddle, so to speak, on the right horse, and, and it was great. That's so amazing. Yeah, I mean, it's, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot, there's a progression to becoming an author where you really do have to believe in your writing and your craft and have the confidence to put that out there and know that it's good. And then the reception for, for for that when it is great and guys definitely check out well the whole Nikki Latrell series but Shooting Star just released in July and it has had amazing reception so far what has that been like to see that positive feedback and everyone just loving the series itself and the book it is it is that way um unfortunately it's a it is a niche um and that keeps the sales down and also yeah. the fact that most people have never heard of Sasser Hill in the horse world yeah they probably have but the thing is my books are for a wider audience they you don't have to know anything about horses you just have to like a good mystery and intrigue and suspense and you would enjoy any of my books and the horse stuff is just sort of like really interesting um, things to learn about and I think most people when they read a book they like learning something new while they're being entertained. So um, my audience is growing, but it, it's a slow process. It is. Absolutely, yeah, it's, it's, it's um, but it, yeah, as, as you said, it's not just about horses. And I know that we focused a lot on talking about that, but it's just something that we happen to have in common. And I was so I happy to, I was so happy to get to, to talk with someone that, that, that knows a little bit about, uh, about horses because, even here in Texas, you know, uh, I live in a in a big city, and we don't have uh, a lot of people who grew up on a on a farm and and had that that equine experience that that Sasser and I both uh, share. But like you said, uh, it's 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 it, it's it really is a thriller slash cozy mystery. I would say, kind of um, 
it's not really cozy. It's a little bit edgier and darker than a okay, cozy, but it's not like uh, you know blood and guts everywhere. Okay, or, and the the kind of books I don't like are serial killer books. Oh. And they're so popular. I don't know why people like to read about serial killers. For one thing, they all have the exact same personality. They're brilliant. They're egotistical. They all have this. It's like everybody's writing the same the same character. It's always oh. the same character. And I, oh my gosh. I mean, you know, it's true. They're all exactly alike. They're horrible. They're they're psychopaths. They um, they're arrogant. So I anyway. that. That was funny. Uh, but no, um, yes. Uh, and anyone who's a fan of just because, you know, the the um, the, the the main focus or, or a lot of it is focused on horses. Hey, guys, go check out the books because it's a fantastic oh, series. Good. Yes. It, uh, and I will have that link in the description below so that you can check out um, Cesar's website as well as the Amazon.com page her author paid it on Amazon and check out the Nikki Latrell books. So I have to ask, I know this is book number five. Are, do you have any plans to continue the series or is this it? Oh, I do. Um, right now there's a book I wrote called The Travels of Quinn, which is about um, the con gypsy con otters here in America that are called the Irish American Travelers. And their main settlement is 40 minutes away from where I live here in South Carolina. So it was great to write about them. Um, and what I'm working on right now is a sequel to The Travels of Quinn. Um, okay. And then I'll go back to Nikki. So we are not done yet. If you, um, I guess, uh, start, with, start with the first one. Um, is that where you, if, if people wanted to start reading your books in general, since you have so many, since you have eight out, uh, would you suggest that they start with the Nikki Latrell series? I think that's a good idea. And the first book in the Nikki Latrell series is Full Mortality. That's marked as book one. Um, I actually ended up writing a prequel. Um, and that's marked as book four because it was the fourth book I wrote, but it's actually a prequel, um, it's a novella, it goes back in time. Um, it's actually free as an ebook. Um, so they can go, grab that up and if they like it, then just keep on going. Awesome. Well, thank you so very, very much for coming on the show with me today and talking. And uh, while, one last question while, while we're at it. You know, uh, it, do you have any advice? for aspiring authors out there who are wanting to become an author, wanting to publish, and just haven't taken that next step yet? Well, the best advice I ever got when I was at the Bethesda Writers' Center um, studying mystery courses, and I had the most wonderful teacher, and um, she would just look at me and go, keep going. Um, and that's what it is. And the longer you write, the better you are. The more you write, the better you are. Um, just keep going. You know, maybe you can do a couple of short stories first or and write a novella. It's easier to get it going, you know, um, rather than getting stuck in, you know, the grapes of wrath or something that'll take right. <laughs> the rest of your life to, and nobody really wants to read anymore anyway. So um, I think that, that that's the best advice I can give anybody. Keep going. Keep going. Don't stop. And Absolutely. when you get depressed, um, if you want to write mysteries, join a group like Mystery Writers of America or Sisters in Crime. If you write romance, join Romance Writers of America because those are inexpensive, relatively inexpensive groups to join. And they're so helpful. They will help you. Awesome. Well, thank you for the wonderful advice. And again, thank you for coming on the show today. It was a pleasure. Everyone go check out the Nikki Latrell series by Sasser Hill. Again, the description, uh, the links are in the description below. If you haven't already, make sure and subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out on great upcoming content. And uh, Sasser, thank you again. It's been a pleasure. Thank Thanks so much. Right. Everyone else, stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you again soon.